I don't do research into all, all the sort of stuff you've uh, done now, except in chemistry. Uh, I'm going to show that anybody in this room can start doing uh, text and data mining within about half an hour to an hour. So that what I'm doing is bringing this to all of you uh, here. Uh, so the research has been done. Uh, we're delivering it in the form that everybody can use. That's the idea. Uh, I'm funded by the Shuttleworth Foundation, um, hopefully for two years, uh, to develop this. Um, and our project, the Content Mine, is going to extract all the scientific facts from the literature on a daily basis. So about between one and 3,000 papers a day, which is trivial on my laptop. And the only problem we face is that the uh, publishers will throw lawyers and lobbyists to try and stop us doing it. So it is purely a social, political, legal problem. And I assert that the right to read something is the right to mine it. So if you can read a paper in the literature somewhere, you have the right to mine it, and the publishers are trying to stop us it with uh, legal contracts in libraries and things like this. And I thank our colleagues at the BL and many of the rest of you very much for fighting this battle. And that is the primary thing uh, that we have to do. Okay, so uh, this is free to everybody. Uh, we've been doing it about uh, seven months. Um, all our software is open, it's updated daily, and we're not doing just text, we're doing diagram mining as well as we will show you. And we're running workshops uh, so that you can come and learn how to do it. And uh, Adam has uh, offered that we, where's Adam? Adam has offered that we can do one for the BL uh, early in the next year uh, and so forth. We're building it as a community, so uh, the uh, difficult bits are done by the bioscientists, the disease people, the astrophysicists, and so on. And, as I say, there's a strong feeling that we're doing this uh, for justice and freedom. So, these are some of the people. I won't go through them in detail, but um, uh, two of them are here. Mark and Ross, stand up. Stand up, right. Uh, Mark from Cottage Labs and Ross uh, from the University of Bath uh, have been absolutely instrumental here. Uh, and we're very fortunate that Cottage Labs have built much of the infrastructure here. And we are sharing this infrastructure with other people. So we share it, for example, with the open access button and so on. If we build a communal infrastructure, everybody benefits. So we are not competing like so many people have to do in academia. We're actually building this as part of the community. And we want you to join us as part of the community. So there's no pride and competition within this. Um, We've run uh, already 10 workshops this year, um, and uh, we're doing uh, one next week uh, with JISC and another the week after with LIBA, the European Research Libraries uh, Association. And the idea of the workshops is to show people what you can do with content mining uh, and also to train people to the stage where they can then uh, train more people and so on and spread it virally. So here's an example we picked up last week at OpenCon. Uh, these are three very uh, proficient graduate students uh, in um, disease at Emory and uh, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, and they want to mine documents like this. So how can we help them? Well, um, uh, they say what they want to do is find the terms. So we have a tool uh, which uses something called regular expressions. Now, don't get upset about this. Regular expressions are easier than crosswords and easy. How many people here do crosswords? Right, and how many do Sudoku? So you can all do regular expressions. They're really very straightforward. They look a bit hairy, but uh, you know, you, we've given these to people who've never seen one before, and they've learnt it within 20 minutes. Regular expressions, if you don't get too hairy about it, uh, uh, and they will find these words for you in our infrastructure. So you don't have to do any of the infrastructure stuff. And that, for example, is what um, Roxanne came up with within uh, a 20 minute coffee break. And we can now deploy it. It takes about 15 minutes for somebody to install our software, or with the cottage labs who are uh, running this uh, for us at no time at all. Uh, and that's the sort of result that you get. Now, that looks a bit hairy because it's XML, but uh, you can actually see that the term Ebola there has been found in this sentence. There have been 14 thingamig cases of Ebola. So, 
there's no problem with OCR here or anything. The main problem is PDF, which is a nightmare, but we've solved most of that for you. Um, uh, so you don't have to worry about reading the PDF. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief demo, if it, uh, which takes one minute, if I'm lucky. Um, and this is connecting to the web, uh, or it isn't. It might. It might, okay, <laughs> right. Uh, we'll see what happens. So this has gone through to Cambridge. Uh, this uh, uh, is very, very easy. You can do it at home. You paste a bit of chemistry in. Now, you may not understand this, but the machine understands it. Uh, and when you process the text, um, bingo, that is in real time. That's not a mock-up. That's gone to Cambridge. It's passed it all, and it's worked out even what the chemicals are. So you see, it's actually very, very semantic here. Uh, and all of that is standard, and we've run that on half a million patents. And why can't we run it on the chemical literature? Because the publishers will try and stop us. That is the only problem we face. Otherwise, the whole of chemistry could be mined in this way uh, within a few weeks. Uh, so, back to our PowerPoint. How much longer have I got? Four minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's try and find out uh, where we are. Okay. This is more complicated. This is the sort of diagram that occurs in, uh, uh, in the literature. And you can see it's not just text here. Uh, it's also lines. Uh, and also, this is pixels. This is not um, uh, nice semantic um, SVG. It's pixels. But we can do that. And Ross and I have been doing this. And we are building a bacterial super tree. So we have <laughs> processed 4,000 of these diagrams. It takes about a second each. And this is from the International Journal of uh, Systematic and Evolutionary Microbiology. Uh, and out of this, we will get a better bacterial tree than anybody else has got because we will have the whole bacterial literature uh, in this study. Um, I may, I've put it full. Oh, it's big enough, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so this uh, is our um, uh, pipeline here, um, and um, I think that's the last slide, isn't it? Yes. So uh, what we do is we crawl the literature, so we have to crawl a thousand or more papers a day, uh, and that's standard technology, and we're working with people like Core uh, and so on to, to, to solve that. Uh, we then have to scrape the papers. Publishers actually destroy information when they publish science. Uh, you know, men, many of them put serious problems in our way. Uh, and we have to scrape it from their websites and try and reconstruct what's there. But we've solved that. And Richard has got 20 volunteers who've written scrapers for all, uh, you know, the whole spectrum of journals. So that's what volunteers uh, will do for you. This is based on volunteers. Uh, and that can spread very quickly, like OpenStreetMap or whomever. Uh, then uh, we have to extract it. Uh, and uh, my tool is called Amy. Uh, and uh, we've got half a dozen projects using Amy, astrophysics, chemistry, phytochemistry, microbiology, disease, and so on. And so if you have a, uh, it's not limited to science, by the way. You can do anything uh, which you've got either text or diagrams and where the ideas are simple. Uh, we are collaborating with a wonderful group called Open Access Button, and we are also going to put all our facts into Wikidata. So this will become the primary repository of high-quality extracted facts from the literature. And we use facts because facts are not copyrightable, and therefore, even if we are sued, we won't be found guilty. 